look what I have in the goodie bag today. And I'm gonna put them up in here. Before we get into it, I wanted to thank you guys for the comments. It was fun at Reefapalooza. I wanted to thank the guys who recognized me, Raymond and Hector as I was leaving. Yeah, Tom Reef, Tom I, Re I, I watch you. So it was just a great time. <laughs> All right, so let's get back into the video. Lots of stuff is happening in here. Some good and only a little bit bad, if you want to call it bad, some algae issues. So that's what we're going to talk about today, along with some of the new growth on some of my corals that were almost dead and gone. And we'll get into each one that I think is important. All right, so they're hermit crabs. I got 200 of them today. I have such a serious hair algae issue on a few places. I just wanted to make every effort to get rid of it. I have some here. I have some here, here, here in the back. And I think there's some in here. See it down in here? So I can't manually remove this. I've been trying to do that every day. Either in there with these or this. These tongs, long tweezers, or these forceps pulling hair algae out. That's why I got the hermit crabs and I load it up. If you want to get rid of hair algae, you can't put one per two gallons or one per gallon. You need to flood your tank with hermit crabs. So I had 200, I put a few in the 10, and I put a few in the 20, and a few more in the five, but I probably have 150 to 175 in the 75. This is kind of a cool little thing I wanted to show you. This just happened, I just figured this out today. These alligator clips and my lighting rack is just the right height to be able to float the bags in the water and keep them from drifting all over the tank because my wave makers will blow the bags all over the place. So this is what I got going here. Here, 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 and here. In my experience, you have to have a lot of hermits to get rid of hair algae and you have to pull off the real long strands. So this is about two hours later and they've dispersed, right? So I know most of them made it. Yeah, these guys are moving. This guy's checking everything out. I like to see that right there, because that means they're going right for it. in life what's the purpose i'm going to try it from the top down today i have the water pumps off everything's off so this gives you a bird's eye view of the top there's my green star polyp they are looking great and i'm glad i kept them on this rock because they're not spreading out onto anything else they're staying right there this is closed up now it goes through those periods i wish it was open for the video but it's not this leather coral is getting huge. My yellow colostria have really grown. They're not growing in a brain pattern. You know, I'd like them to fill in, but they're growing a lot of branches. So I'm happy with that. My paleos are looking great. They really colored up nicely once under this light. This is bright light in here, guys. My bottom of my tank is probably 250 pars. These are under about 300 par right now, all this stuff, and they're doing really well, but I went really slow. Here's my yellow leather. So my Duncans look great. They really have grown and exploded in growth since I put them in the 75. I'm really pleased with the growth and the color of the Duncans. From the time I put them in the 75, they've grown exponentially and the color has gotten really, really nice. I feed them about once a week. They get a lot of food from my normal feeding the fish and I'm just really pleased with the way they look now. I'm 
I'm really pleased with the way the tank is looking in here. It's really clean, clear, the water is really great, parameters are good. So the Recordia look awesome. And you can see it's ready to split. You see the second mouth? We're at about the six month period now. My Australian leather is still dropping branchlets. So that's kind of cool. And the polyps are closed up a little because that happens when they start dropping branchlets. See ones down there? If I had to give you any advice again, I've said it before, in this hobby, you need patience. I'm talking about months of patience, maybe like six months of patience with certain things. This Gorgonian back here has really grown. It's branching off, there's more branches coming off it, and it's growing taller, and it just looks really, really nice. Remember this guy here? This is a green Monte Digitata. It was large, it died, and now it's coming back. And here's the fire Digitata Montepora back there, and that's starting to come up. These came out of the 10 gallon, and they're growing. That's another Digitata, fire Digitata. This is a Stylophora here. This acro is really growing well and coloring up since I brought it in from the 10. I believe it's called Rainbow Granulosa. And it's starting to get the green tips with purple in there and a little of the blues. And then down low, we have some tans and green. And yellow leather is looking really nice too. It's not growing larger, but it's nice and healthy. And I think it's maxed out on its growth or it's just slowing down. This is a nice shot. That's a money shot right there. Look at that. I just got that before I was going to shut off. Look at that, huh? Right there. Tang's munching out on the nori soaked with Selcon. Maybe he'll go after some of the hair algae. He eats a little bit of it, but not a lot. He is not a hair algae eater. Clownfish is getting big. EJ is doing great. Citron Gobi is actually citron because he is orange in color. Look at these guys. See, they're already at work on this. My school of Chromis is doing awesome. Uh, there's some infighting, but not enough for any of them to have died off. I told you I had one, but that was some time ago. What I've been doing lately, guys, is just filter sponge in here just to collect the big stuff. And here's the pump to the refugium that goes up. I put a gate valve on it so I can tr control the flow in it. We'll do an update on that. I got a mini refugium growing inside my overflow box, which is fine. Let the algae grow in this little section here. Usually when I take my skimmer out, I have to scrape algae off. It's getting too much light, but it's fine because I clean it once a week, once every two weeks and it's serving its purpose. It's doing what it's supposed to do. It doesn't matter what it's growing on the outside. I also wanted to mention that I'm running the skimmer on reverse photo period. So I'm only running the skimmer in the evening hours. And the reason for that is because of the nitrate and phosphate still being quite low. My MP10 runs on a tidal surge. Every three to six hours, it cranks up and then it comes down. So this is the tidal surge right now. And you can see that it's creating a decent amount of flow. It's actually flowing this way. And that's because it's bouncing off this side from over here. So the MP10 is a pretty powerful wave maker and it's perfect for this tank. So you can see with my return, I also have the little Higer Mini Wave to kind of keep the back flow going and in here. So you can see it creates a really nice surface agitation and flow in the tank. All right, if you're new to the channel, this is my lighting setup. I have three Kessel A80s, one 16 HD, 
and two AI souls. And I found that this way I can spread the light over my tank far better than if I had one of the hydras where the two lights are clustered quite close together. And I also had several of these lights before I decided to make the 75 gallon. What is that? Oh, shit.